The critical warning signs of pneumonia you must not ignore. Pneumonia is an infection that demands a high index of suspicion, largely because its symptoms can overlap so easily with common illnesses like flu or bronchitis, or even just feeling run down. Missing the true severity of a developing pneumonia can have disastrous, sometimes fatal consequences. In this video, I'll define pneumonia, break down the four primary ways we categorize it, including community acquired versus healthcare associated, and detail the crucial red flags that distinguish a serious lung infection from a simple cough. It's not always so easy to tell the difference, trust me. Crucially, I'll also discuss the essential diagnostic tools doctors use, such as chest x-rays and blood work, to accurately identify the specific cause and to ensure the correct treatment is started immediately. Our goal is to empower you to understand the seriousness of this infection and recognize when you need emergency care. Welcome back. I'm Dr. John Chuback, board certified cardiovascular and thoracic surgeon. So I have a tremendous amount of experience with pulmonary disease and the treatment of of pneumonia, both surgical and non-surgical. In my practice, no matter what the disease is, I always aim to reduce complications and help my patients achieve the best possible outcomes. With these videos, I hope to inform you and even entertain you from time to time with interesting medical topics to be able to make informed decisions when it comes to your personal health. Today's subject, pneumonia, is truly critical. It's something that's very, very near and dear to my heart, something I, as I said, I have tremendous experience with. So, Let's take a look at the evidence. Let's begin with the definition. Pneumonia is an infection that causes inflammation in the air sacs of your lungs. These are little structures that we call alveoli. Think of the alveoli as tiny balloons deep inside your lungs where oxygen gets exchanged for carbon dioxide. This is a miraculous process and really, really neat to study. When pneumonia strikes, these little air sacs become flooded with fluid or even with pus, essentially turning the balloon into a wet sponge, fluid bogged. This fluid buildup interferes with the normal process of gas exchange, which is what the lung is primarily responsible to do. This drastically reduces the amount of oxygen reaching your bloodstream. This lack of sufficient oxygen can severely strain the heart, the brain, and all the major organs, leading to dangerous systemic complications. This is a severe systemic infection that can affect anyone, but it is especially dangerous for the very young and and the elderly. And those with underlying health conditions are always at high risk as well. Conditions such as chronic heart failure, COPD, or diabetes put someone at a much higher risk of pneumonia and a much higher risk of having complications when they develop pneumonia. Recognizing and diagnosing pneumonia early is vital to prevent severe respiratory failure or even sepsis, which we've talked about before. Sepsis is a life-threatening body-wide response to infection. So with that being said, let's go over the four primary ways that doctors categorize this disease so you can understand the different risks involved. First, we classify pneumonia based on where the infection was acquired. Where did you catch it? Which is important because it dictates the type of bacteria we suspect. The most common is community-acquired pneumonia, meaning the infection occurred outside of the hospital or any other healthcare setting, like a nursing home, for example. You caught it from someone in the general public. This is typically what we see in otherwise healthy patients, and it's usually treatable with common antibiotics. The second form is called healthcare-associated pneumonia, or HCAP, which includes infections acquired during a hospital stay, while living in a nursing home, or during treatments like kidney diabetes. Dialysis. HCAP is much more concerning because these environments tend to harbor bacteria that are much more resistant to standard antibiotics, making the infection harder to kill and much more dangerous to the patient in many cases. Next, the infection or the bacteria or the infectious agent causing the infection. The most common and most aggressive type is bacterial pneumonia. It's often caused by the bug Streptococcus pneumoniae. This form typically comes on violently and suddenly starting with very high fever and severe shaking and chills and a very productive cough that often brings up green or yellow phlegm. The patient usually feels extremely sick almost overnight. The second most common type is viral pneumonia, which is caused by common viruses like influenza or RSV. Before gradually worsening over a few days, 
or even a week. It's crucial to remember that antibiotics are completely useless against viral pneumonia and treatment focuses on supportive care like rest and fluids. The third type is fungal pneumonia. This form is rare and usually occurs only in people with very specific exposure or a severely weakened immune system. When I was in the hospital doing major thoracic and vascular surgery and taking care of critically ill patients, when we had patients with cancer or HIV and AIDS, for example, these people were much more apt to develop this kind of a pneumonia. It's caused by inhaling fungal spores from the environment, often found in soil or even bird droppings in certain geographical areas. Because it's rare and its symptoms often mimic other less serious lung diseases, it can be easily missed. It often requires specialized antifungal medications and laboratory tests to treat it and to make the diagnosis. Finally, the fourth type is aspiration pneumonia. This happens when foreign material, food, liquid, or stomach contents, basically vomit, or even excessive saliva is accidentally inhaled into the lungs instead of being swallowed down the esophagus, what we call going down the wrong pipe. We've all had this experience. This is common in patients who have difficulty swallowing, what we call dysphagia. These people have sometimes, for example, suffered a stroke or people who experience severe acid reflux, especially while sleeping. It could also happen during intubation when we're trying to put a patient under general anesthesia for an operation, especially if they weren't prepared properly and the stomach isn't fully empty beforehand. This sometimes happens in emergency surgery. Aspiration can introduce both chemical irritants like stomach acid as well as harmful bacteria from the mouth into the deep lung tissue requiring immediate and targeted antibiotic intervention to prevent severe lung damage. Beyond these specific causes there are critical red flag symptoms of pneumonia that you should never ignore as they signal that the infection is potentially life-threatening or causing organ damage. These severe signs include sudden and severe difficulty breathing or shortness of breath, especially when you're resting or trying to speak. Feeling sharp or stabbing chest pain when you take a deep breath or cough, which suggests inflammation of the lung lining, or a high persistent fever that stays elevated above 102 degrees, and confusion or severe changes in mental awareness, which is especially concerning in older individuals and indicates that the brain is not receiving enough oxygen. If these severe symptoms are are present, you must seek emergency medical care immediately. Sometimes people will simply have the feeling that yes, they're coughing, they're short of breath, but they get a sense that they're just struggling overall, failing to thrive, not being able to do their normal activity with the same ease and with the same kind of confidence and vigor. To confirm a diagnosis of pneumonia and determine the pathogen causing the infection, doctors rely on essential diagnostic tools. The chest x-ray is considered the gold standard standard. It's an all-time classic. It provides a visual confirmation of the problem showing a characteristic white patch or patches called infiltrates or consolidation in the lungs where the air sacs are filled with fluid. This doesn't always happen right away and can sometimes take a day or two to develop on the x-ray, which is one of the reasons x-rays are sometimes repeated if the first one is clear despite the patient being very symptomatic. Blood tests are also absolutely crucial. A complete blood blood count, or CBC, helps determine if the infection is likely bacterial, which is indicated by a very high white blood cell count, and the blood culture is critical as a test where we sample your blood and place it in a special growth medium to see if any bacteria will grow. If bacteria grow, the lab can identify the specific type, which is vital for choosing the exact and most effective antibiotic. These steps ensure that potentially fatal infection is not only confirmed, but also treated with surgical and early precision, minimizing the risk of resistance and long-term damage. We've covered the definition, the key classifications based on acquisition and pathogen type, detailed the severe symptoms that demand immediate attention, and outlined the crucial diagnostic tools. Understanding these warning signs and diagnostic steps is the most powerful weapon you have for navigating this serious infection and preventing severe, life-threatening complications. I'm Dr. John Chuback, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.